So do you want to know how to play Nintendo Switch games on your PC? Well, keep watching because I'm going to show you how to use Ryu Bing, which is essentially the continuation of Ryu Jing. Sometimes information's worth more than money, and I've learned plenty watching you. Before I deep dive into this tutorial, just as an FYI, all the links are in the description. And if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment. Now we got that out of the way, let's get into it. The first thing you want to do is head over to GitHub, where you'll be faced with two options. You can either download a stable version or Canary. And for those who are experienced, may opt for the Canary. But if you want a stable version, then opt for stable. You then navigate to packages and you select the latest version. In this case, it's reusing 1.3.3. And you may be wondering, why is it called reusing? And that's simply because this is an extension of the reusing emulator. Once you've downloaded your application, in my case, which has been downloaded to my desktop, you can see that there are a few files here. I've got my firmware file and I have my prod keys alongside the reusing zip file. For this emulator to work, you must have firmware and prod key files. Unfortunately, I can't tell you where to get these files from, but they're pretty simple if you know how to use Google. One thing that you need to know is that your firmware folder has to remain zipped. You do not have to unzip your firmware folder, whereas the prod key folder you can unzip, which is what you can see here. As for the emulator, we're gonna go ahead and unzip the emulator using the application called 7-Zip and select Extract 2. Once you've unzipped the folder, you can delete the zip folder and then you can launch the application. Once you've opened up the reusing folder, you select publish and then reusing. Now, some users may find it easier to create a shortcut, which will prevent you from accessing the folder each and every time you want to launch the application. It's entirely up to you. Once launched, the first thing we're gonna do is install our keys. So we're gonna select actions, install keys, and then select the dot keys option. You select your prod keys and then open, and then the emulator will ask you for your confirmation. You simply select yes to continue. Once successfully installed, you then select okay. You then go back into actions, select install firmware, and then we select .xci or zip. Select your firmware, and when the confirmation pop-up appears on the screen, you select yes. And once it's installed successfully, you select okay. Now that's done, let's load our games. So we're going to go into Options, Settings, and we should then be on the Interface option. Under Game Directories, we select Add, and we want to locate the folder where our games are stored. Once selected, if you have any DLCs or game updates, we can also add these via the option below. Now the DLCs and updates are used in emulators to make games complete, stable and accurate to the real Switch experience. So why does the updates matter? It addresses bug fixes, performance improvements, emulator compatibility, balance and quality of life changes, especially for Mario, Zelda and Pokemon. So if you do have any updates or DLCs, I do advise you to use this functionality to update them. Once that's done, we can then go into input. We use this option to map the buttons on our controller. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I've already synced my PS5 DualSense controller to my PC. In case you're unsure as to how to do this, then please check out our other video. The link's in the description. However, if you do want to change any of the default buttons and mappings, then what you can do is select the button that you want to remap, then press the designated button on the controller. Or if you do want a Joy-Con setup, what you can do is pair your Joy-Cons to your PC and then under controller type, change the type to Joy-Con pair. This will give you a more authentic console accurate gameplay experience. If immersion matters more than ergonomics, Joy-Cons are the better choice. Now that's done, the only thing that's left are graphics. And on this tab, there's only two changes that I would suggest making. One would be the resolution scale and the other would be the aspect ratio. Resolution scale and aspect ratio exist to balance visual quality, performance and screen fit when emulating Switch games. The Switch renders most games at 720p handheld or 900 stroke 1080p docked. Emulators let you go higher. So what it does, it increases internal render resolution two times, three times, four times, makes games sharper and cleaner and also reduces jagged edge. The aspect ratio controls how the image fits your screen. 
common options 16 by 9 which is native switch and recommended 21 by 9 which is ultra wide feels ultra wide monitors and you can also stretch or custom to remove those black bars or distort images now that's done you can click ok and then you can launch your game by just simply double clicking so guys, I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you did, please feel free to leave a like or go one step further and subscribe. And until next time, see you later.